Um, an orange body color is, a, is in high demand uh, as a, as a uh, fire opal. So if you see a bright orange opal that looks a little bit funny, um, maybe it's a, a dyed one. So here's how it works. Here's an untreated hydrophane opal. And then you immerse it in your treatment media. Could be dyes or resins. And it starts soaking in further and further. And all of a sudden, you have a fully immersed piece there, full absorption in your treatment media. Here's a piece of the GIA examine that was clarity enhanced with oil. And it also had uh, a strange kind of uh, plastic uh, filled matrix on the back of it. So. The labs are occasionally finding examples of this. So our in-house test here, remember the piece of a rough that had the, uh, the crack in it. Um, I also sacrificed four of my cut pieces here to do some experimentation. And here's the weights uh, before we did anything. And two of them we immersed in Johnson's baby oil on a hot plate. Um, two of them were immersed in Opticon, similar effect, but I'll just show you what happened with the, the Johnson's baby oil. See how it's penetrated in here and it's come and, and stopped at this barrier right here? Um, what I surmise is that the, the, the humidity in the air was sufficient to cause enough water to be trapped inside uh, the opal that the oil could not penetrate all the way through. And here's the rough, the same thing happened. You see the rim here? That's where the oil penetrated, but it didn't go any further into the stone. So here you have before and after. Here's uh, before and after with the oil, and you can see how it's killed the fire here. But with the Opticon, the fire is pretty much the same before and after. Um, this is after heat. This piece here, you see how it shattered. After oil, you went from this beautiful green crystal to this really cloudy, milky, ugly thing here. This is after red dye, and this is after Opticon treatment with virtually no change. And you can see our weight differences here. You had a slight increase here. You had a dramatic decrease. And this is just from, from heating. This is an opal that was kept in the safe, and it was put on a, uh, like a, a, a coffee warmer to heat it up to the point where it cracked. And you can see the weight loss here. Also, heat with dye, weight loss there. Uh, Opticon on, the, uh, on the, the cabochon, there was no change. There was a slight change in the rough, and there was a slight change in the uh, increase after oiling. Um, GIA's advanced study of these samples included FTIR, absorbents, and uh, transmittance, Raman, shortwave UV, longwave UV, and diamond view. Now, shortwave UV is non-diagnostic. Um, you can see the variations in the, in the untreated piece here. So any variations that you see in the other ones, uh, there's nothing you can be able to read out of this. And pretty much the same for, for long wave. A little bit stronger reaction, but again, nothing diagnostic. Now, FTIR absorbance, you can see here in our natural piece, uh, the peak right here, Whereas with our Opticon, our, uh, yeah, Opticon here, you've got uh, a really exaggerated peak in the same position. And with your baby oil, you've got a lot, a lot, a lot of peaks here. Um, it's really too early, and we haven't tested enough pieces to be able to say conclusively what's going on. But it's possible that because there's other compounds in the baby oil, like fragrances, that uh, that's why it's causing the multiple peaks in that uh, in that region. So. The advanced study, uh, we can say at the moment the FTIR absorbance is potentially diagnostic and the rest are inconclusive and there is ongoing study with additional samples going on. So dyeing hydrophane. You've got basically smoke and liquid colored dyes. Remember this lot here? Let's watch what happens and you'll understand how the dyeing takes place. Here we put these all in, uh, in just in a glass of water, plain water. This is after 10 minutes. You see how they're starting to soak up the water. This is plain water after one hour. There's a couple of them here that are sort of holding out, not wanting to fully absorb. And then after two hours, complete absorption of the water. And taking them out to dry, this is all what they look at, uh, on, just on plain paper with uh, with fully absorbed water content. And this is the next day, 
24 hours sitting uh, just on my desk. There you have before and after. And on a black background, just to give you the contrast there, these are straight out to dry, and there they are the next day. So, um, the resin issue, uh, SSCF also uh, received in their lab for testing a couple of resin-treated nodules. Um, my biggest comment here is, oops, it didn't work. <laughs> Dying hydrophane opal, smoke liquid colored dyes. Um, Bear Williams at, uh, and Kara Williams at Stone Group Laboratories in the US have done some excellent work on studying the, uh, the before and after of the, the smoke treatment of opals. And um, there are some diagnostics, carbon spots in, uh, inside the treated opal. Uh, this is a really tricky issue. If, if you're not really confident in what you're looking at, if you got a black opal from, from Ethiopia, I highly recommend uh, having a, a good lab take a look at it. Because if it's natural, it's going to be very valuable. But if it's smoke treated, it's going to be quite cheap. Um, there was some purple opal that reportedly came out of Mexico that uh, the GIA examined. And it turned out to be all dyed Ethiopian material. Or I suspected to be Ethiopian. Now here's some of the lower grade smoke material that you can find abundantly in the market these days. And here's some higher grade smoke treated opal. This really does mimic some of the finest black opal that you can find in Australia. And here's your jelly bean colored dyes as I like to call them. I thank the, uh, the Gemological Institute of Cambodia for providing this photo for us. <laughs> Here's some dyed Ethiopian hydrophane opal, and you can see the, the variety of vivid colors that you can produce from it. And here's our natural opal counterparts. The orange, of course, the fire opal for Mexico that is real popular. And then your common opal, your pink, and your, uh, your blue from Peru and this spectacular green that comes from Tanzania, and then of course your Australian natural blacks. So, what is the fairy tale? There's a great quote from Bear Williams. He said, once information is released on a large enough scale that is not confirmed with the rest of the gemological community, and it turns out to be incorrect, steps have to be taken so that the confusion does not spread. Now, we had a recent rumor that appeared uh, on Facebook, and this is a quote by Mr. Federico Barlocher. Uh, he's an Italian videographer and a Burmese gems trader who has done some, uh, some presentations right in this room. He said that nearly all the Ethiopian opals are treated to stabilize them against cracking. So that's a really important statement to follow up on. These are statements by Mr. Damien Cody, director of the uh, Cody Opal uh, Company in Australia. And he says that most of the material, the Ethiopian material, uh, Ethiopian material, is stabilized with clear polyurethane-like materials, and it's rarely disclosed. Uh, most of the cut material is undoubtedly stabilized, and it's not viable to test the cheap stones, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he claims that the reason why it has to be stabilized is because of its hydrophane properties and the problems when cutting and processing the rough. So let's examine this now. Bear Williams also went on to say that he was glad to hear that I was speaking in support of the Ethiopian material, debunking some of the knee-jerk reaction that has been taking place. There is a patent for treating the cracky opals. Now, one of the things I want to point out here is that, oops, I lost the page there, sorry. Um, this is a four-step process four times it has to the, your material has to be soaked in resins and notice the bottom here cure your cabochons in air for about one year this is not a very practical patent for opal dealers and traders um, anyway just because something has a patent does not mean it's going to be commercially in, in widespread use and I'll give you a good good example in 1989 Corning incorporated developed a patent for synthesizing topaz. And to this day, 20 years later, we have no synthetic topaz available in the market. So, the problem is that polymer resins are waterproof. 
treatment of hydrophane opals with a waterproof resin renders them no longer hydrophane. They would no longer absorb water. Does that make sense to everyone? The solution, develop a quick, easy, cheap, and conclusive test to verify if an opal is still hydrophane or not. So I propose the Einstein Rough Ethiopian Opal Polymer Resin Treatment Test Protocol. <laughs> Einstein's quote here, everything should be made as simple as possible. But I also have an alternate, uh, uh, that is the KISS proposition, the KISS Test Protocol. Uh, you know, the infamous Gene Simmons. And in this case, KISS really stands for keep it simple, stupid. So this is the KISS Rough Ethiopian, excuse me, Rough Ethiopian Hydrophane Opal Polymer Resin Treatment Test Protocol. First, the uh, the rough that you find from Ethiopia typically has this uh, this chalky uh, uh, white uh, matrix that you find it in, and it is highly absorbent and it will suck up water like a sponge. So take your rough hydrophane specimen for testing in hand. Stick it on your tongue, and if it sticks, guess what? It is untreated hydrophane. Okay, there you go. Thank you, Einstein, for that simple, and thank you, Gene Simmons, for the KISS principle. Okay. Now you know why I call it the KISS or the Einstein uh, test protocol. So. Now, for cut Ethiopian hydrophane opal polymer resin treatment test protocol, I propose the French kiss method. <laughs> this requires an actual exchange of fluids. So, but we're going to use Thai drinking water instead if nobody objects. Uh, I did a dry run on a rough specimen just to, to, to see what would happen. And uh, here's before when it's dry. And here it is after 24 hours of saturation. So. The, the French KISS method works really, really well, I can assure you of that. So now we needed a gem show where there are dozens of dealers selling Ethiopian hydrophane opal. Well, Bangkok show isn't until next month, but in the basement of the JTC, lo and behold, hold, I found over, actually I made a mistake there, it's actually, it is 30, not 20. More than 30 companies selling the hydrophane opal. Then we needed an unbiased observer who can choose the opals for testing so no one could accuse me of using my eagle eye and knowing which ones were not treated. So, enter Mr. Simon Dussard. Simon, would you like to stand up here? Uh, Simon's gonna run through and tell us what we did. Right, so as he said, that's the KISS method, that's why I'm here for the last S, the stupid part, since I don't know anything about opals. Um, the idea was basically to run through uh, five or six different companies in the JTC basement, and uh, five of them accepted, as you can see them here, so we basically t uh, picked five different pieces of opals uh, from the tray from the non-treated Opals. Two companies did not participate, one because of a language barrier, they didn't understand what you're talking about, and the other one, the boss wasn't there. The boss kind of <laughs> So, what was I? Yes, the five different opals that we picked from uh, each of their trays from uh, non-treated opals, which Obviously, as I said, I know nothing about, as you could see for the few that asked me a question about the opals here. Uh, you already saw that opals is definitely not my forte. And uh, we put them into water to try them out and see how they would react after 24 hours. So here you've got a selection of fine non-treated opal from Ethiopia, which actually are quite cheap when you look at it. And those are the alleged treated opal from these sellers. So there was no possibility to get a mistake out of this one because they're very clear on it. Uh, yeah, well, so I was, as I said, instructed of picking up five different uh, type of opal, which we ended up putting on uh, Jeffrey's name card, putting them into water so that you can see the difference before and after uh, the test and see here how they... That was the scientific part of it. As I said, I'm the stupid part of the genome. So, uh... You have the different tests for the five different companies, which each time five different opals before and after, before and after it's returned on top. So even I can follow up, so I'm sure you can too. 
and there you go. So it's quite conclusive. So far we've got out of 25, basically 23 that went straight in and that give us zero possibility of mistake and two that are a little bit more tricky. But I'm sure that Jeff is going to explain you that much better than I would. Thank you very much, Simon. Now, before we get to our, our results here, <clears throat> take a look at the um, this caramel colored one here. And you see how it has only a very slight absorption there after 24 hours. Um, and this one here also, there's only very, very slight change before and after. <clears throat> Um, so 23 tested samples uh, showed moderate to strong absorption and increased transparency. One sample showed minor and one negligible change. Both of these were of the semi-opaque caramel color type. Uh, now this great X uh, XRF study from Stone Group Labs indicated that uh, the green line is the, the crystal opal, that's the real gemmy material, and the black line is, is the uh, the chocolate or the, the caramel color. So you have a greatly reduced amount of, of uh, potassium and a greatly increased amount of, uh, of iron over here. So it's this shift that's taking place in your trace elements that are likely to be responsible for the difference in the, uh, the absorption of water. Uh, but further study needs to be taking, take place there. So the hydrophane, uh, this is one of the smoke-treated opals that actually is uh, the only opal that Simon owns, uh, his collection piece. And you can see the drastic effect, just like the Mexican uh, smoked hydrophane in my collection. And there it is, fully saturated with water, and there it is dried out again. Um, now, Stone Group Laboratories has the, uh, the honor of uh, being awarded with a, a Lifetime Achievement Award by Jewelry Television in the US. Um, their laboratory is the primary screener for uh, jewelry, jewelry television. Uh, they're the, the, basically the lab of choice that JTV goes to for testing their gems. Sorry, GIA. Um, but uh, let's look at some, some things that they have to say here. That, uh, um, Stone Group has been instrumental in establishing and implementation of our disclosures and regulatory compliance program, which are generally acknowledged as the best in the industry. So JTV, I want you to know, are really, really strict about their disclosure policy. They want every stone they sold to have a full disclosure so that the, the consumer knows what the treatment is, if it's natural, et cetera, et cetera. So <clears throat> another quote by Bear here, JTV does sell some world-class black opal, but they sell a lot of Ethiopian hydrophane as well. And uh, they do sell some dyed ones, but they prefer to sell more than natural. So if you look at the, uh, the JTV website uh, and the Ethiopian opal section, as of a couple days ago, they had 793 items listed for sale. And you have here one of the smoked black and one of the, uh, the dyed orange stones. And there's a close-up there. And here is the disclosure, treatment smoked. So they're clearly disclose, disclosing the treatment. And here's the orange one, clearly disclosed as dyed. And the natural one. This is no treatment. So the rumor that nearly all opals are treated to stabilize them against cracking with some sort of uh, material because of their losing water so quickly and the other uh, statements by Mr. Damien Cody. Um, we've got some quotes here. This is from In Color Magazine and from Gems and Gemology. Laboratory testing of the Wolo Opal revealed that most specimens were resistant to crazing after repeatedly being immersed in water and dried out over a period of time. And then the opaque to translucent opals from uh, Wengeltana became transparent when soaked in water, hydrophane, and are resistant to cracking and remarkably durable. Um, here's an article from Rappaport Magazine, the uh, Ramanellas Commercial Mineral in Arizona. They've seen little crazing in the tens of thousands of pieces they've worked with. And Bear Williams also, he said, uh, widely sold as nice crystal opal, is tough and stable enough to be treated in smoke, with smoke and heat and not craze. 
And then again, uh, this quote by, uh, by uh, Elise Galou, um, talking about the, the recognized stability of the Wolo material com compared with the uh, Mezzozo. So, for the most part, Ethian hydrophane opal is not being treated because it does not need to be treated. And there again, currently there appears to be a surprising lack of protective treatments performed on these stones. So far, they've only had a couple of them that have showed up in, uh, in the lab with the, with the coating. And he also said he's glad to hear that I'm speaking about support of the uh, Ethiopian material, debunking some of the knee-jerk uh, knee reactions. So the conclusion is widespread polymer treatment of Ethiopian hydrophane opal is another fairy tale. Now, there's a second part to Barry's quote that is very important here. He said that I fear that some of the concerns are legitimate and need to be considered in your discussion. So, consumer awareness for us in a trade is really critically important. We want the consumer to know exactly what they're buying. So, what I would recommend is that anyone who's selling Ethiopian opal, let their client know that contact with oils or other liquids may result in a reduction of play of color and permanent damage to the opal. And also, beads are a problem. They should only be worn on top of clothing. They should never be worn in contact with the skin where they can absorb perspiration. And it's not yet known if this negative effect is reversible or not. So I want to thank you all for your attention this evening. And thank you for having a question.